And we are recording. Guess what, folks? It's a Sunday, yes. It fucking is. Time for a bit of what's up. Um, yeah, not a lot of first looks. Thought I'd warn you now, if you're thinking of skipping straight to the first looks, only one eight. Well, technically two items came in, but I can't show that second one until next week, basically, because I don't know why they just said don't show it until next week. But here's the thing. It's kind of already been shown by them. But I'm not going to get into it. It's weird the way that, that, that it's weird the way that some and I've I've been noticing this happening and this this actually stunned a lot of other reviewers have commented commented in this and welcome to think of it. But this all started happening when USPS decided to clamp down on internal US based. Uh, vape um, vape products being mailed out. Then you seen DHL say, oh, we're not going to ship them either. And then UPS said, we're not going to ship them either. And a whole bunch of other fucking companies said the same thing. And I haven't had a parcel, an e-cig parcel from DHL since this began. And it used to be the case that it was DHL that literally delivered 90% of the e-cig devices from China to the studio and sometimes to here at the house. Now it's all UPS and I'm kind of surprised at that because UPS were the first company to pop up, apart from USPS, UPS were the first company to pop up and say, we're not shipping them either. And it looks like UPS changed their mind for the international side of things and it looks like DHL didn't. And what's been happening is... Um, and I found this out as well when I when I stopped using Royal Mail to to ship out the uh, the uh, boxaways for the folks in Patreon, subscribe star and YouTube, and the boxaways for the sponsored boxaways on the UK vape show. When I stopped using Royal Mail because they kept fucking losing packages all the damn time, they never used to, but they started doing it very recently. I went to look at UPS or DHL. And internally, within the UK, UPS actually works out cheaper than Royal Mail. DHL comes out at round about the same price. And I thought, well, there's one check for UPS. Internationally, because the boxaways in this channel are, are open to the international audience. I'm not limiting things to the UK only. Internationally, UPS comes out roughly the same it depends on the not so much the the weight it depends on the size and the weight of the package ups came out roughly the same as royal mail as long as the parcel is under two kilos in weight dhl however <gasps> dhl's prices were bouncing up and down um, and then when you've got to put, so it's not the SEC code, that's something else. When you've got to put the shipping code in the manifest and you, 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 you put in, like, if it's a pod kit, somebody's won or something, and you pop in, there's a lithium-ion battery cell within the package, the DHL shipping cost exponentially goes through the roof. And I think maybe that's why, I mean, it's not as if DHL have flat out come out and said, we're not shipping e stuff. But I think the exponential price increases on DHL's part, and this, ha this started to happen very recently with DHL. I think that's what made a lot of companies switch over to UPS. But then UPS has the problem at customs. Because for some strange apparent reason, every single fucking UPS package seems to get scanned at customs these days in the UK. The amount of customs charges I've had to pay, um, and don't get me wrong, it's not as if it's a lot, it's like £10 here, £20 there. Now and again it's 40 quid, and that, that's when I go, whoa, wait a minute here. That's when I ask the manufacturer to pay for the customs charge instead. But, you know, and what I've been noticing happening here, and I think it's a lot, I think a lot of it is to do with UPS always getting held at customs. Fucking always getting held at customs. A lot of companies have started shipping out everything they're going to release within the next two months in one big fuck off box. They ship the whole box out to the reviewer and they list out a timetable 
of when you can say I got this. Now, me and dates don't get on pretty well, folks, because I've got a nasty tendency of fucking forgetting things or losing bits of paper or losing notes. I've found myself in trouble now and again by showing an item. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think the last item was something from Geek Vape, from what I remember. But I found myself in trouble now and again showing an item, like, fucking weeks! <laughs> weeks! Before it should have been shown. I think it might have been the Digi Flavor. What, what, no, it wasn't Digi Flavor. It was something from Geek Vape. That was the last thing I got in trouble for. Uh, but yeah, this has started happening a lot. So they send a box of stuff and it's like dates of when you can do the social media posts on it. And that's the sheet of paper that I generally start to... That, that's the sheet of paper that I generally lose. But yeah, things are, things are weird. Uh, things are very weird. In, in, in the e-cig review scene right now, it's like weeks, literally, go by with one item coming in. And you're sitting there thinking, oh, what's going on here? And then for a week, like for a full week, it's package, 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 package. That's kind of what happened two weeks ago. That's why last week's first looks was pretty busy, but it's package, 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 package. And about two of those packages are stacked items uh, with a timetable of when or when not to release the actual information on that item. This never happened. This never used to happen. Not until the mail thing happened over in the United States, because it was the, it was the case that before all this kicked off in the United States... Shenzhen companies, Shenzhen e-cig companies over in China were more than happy to send one item in a small DHL Express envelope, just chuck it out there in the mail. But when this mail thing started and DHL got very, very iffy about electronic cigarettes and started messing with the tariff rates on e-cigarettes that have got internal lipos, which is practically all the pod kits and starter kits out there on the market, they started shifting to UPS, and because UPS always get held up at customs, they started shipping everything in the one big box. So, I don't know. It's weird, the way things are going right now. It's very weird. But, there is only one item up for the first looks this week. I think there's about two or three items coming in next week. There's probably two of those items I can't show you, but I think there's about two or three items coming in next week from what I remember. There's a couple of uh, couple of kits and a tank, or is it a dripper? I think it's a couple of kits and a dripper, from what I remember. Anyway, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. So, um, I think it was a few days ago I put out a very short video about the Electronic Cigarette 101 video series and the one thing that kept cropping up um and i can kind of see why they're saying it is the ease that is that is that when it comes to the e-cig 101 what should happen with that series of videos is it should concentrate on nothing but the beginning side of the of of vaping like starter kits coils that kind of thing and the original plan for me was was to basically alternate between beginner vaping and advanced vaping. So one episode would be beginner vaping, the episode after that would be advanced, the episode after that would be back to beginner again. And I can kind of see where a lot of, I can kind of see where a lot of people were going with this. Um, the e that the ESIG one hundred and one series should concentrate mainly on the beginner side of vaping. So. Here's what the plan is now. What I'm going to be doing, instead of doing beginner advanced, beginner advanced, beginner advanced, right, on a on a running on on a running order. After this is going to be after the next e sig one hundred one goes up, which is to do with the uh, which is to do. In fact, I might just scrap that and start from scratch. I don't know yet though. But what I'm going to be doing instead is doing a progression series. So I'm gonna I'm gonna basically do what a lot of people were suggesting in the comments. So the eSig 101, depending on whether it's going to start this trend next week or the week after, I don't know yet. Uh, but 
what's going to happen with the eSig 101 is that I'm going to go back to the beginning and basically stay there. So the whole point of the the, the whole point of the reimagined eSig 101 series is to concentrate everything, at least the next ten episodes of it, on the beginner side of vaping. Try and get into the mindset. This is me I'm talking about here. Try and get into the mindset of someone who's starting vaping right now, right now, not seven years ago in my case, but someone who's starting vaping right now and ask the questions in today's context that I was asking seven years ago. The industry between seven years ago and now is vastly different to what it was, vastly different from each other, vastly different. For instance, today, if someone was to give up vaping today, or not give up vaping, fuck, give up smoking, there we go, if someone was to give up smoking today, they would have a far easier time than I did giving up smoking seven years ago, because there is a vast array of podcasts and starter kits on the market compared to what the market was like in 2014 when I gave up smoking. So, technically speaking, technically speaking, smokers today have got a much easier time giving up smoking via vaping in 2021 than they had in 2014. But that comes with a couple of big pits, a couple of big pitfalls. Because there's so much product out there, the smoker would look at all these products and go, well, what fucking one do I get? Especially if that smoker doesn't have a nearby vape shop to walk into, if they're relying on online. So that's the mindset I'm going to try and get myself into, starting at the very, very beginning and working my way up. And then episode 10 to episode 12, roundabout there, that's when we start dabbling in the mid-tier stuff. So we're talking stock coil, sub-ohm tank, high wattage kits with external 18650s. And when you're talking about external 18650s, that's when the door starts to open to what will be future series runs, I suppose you can call them, of the eSig 101. The plan I've got in my head right now, this is what I've got in my head anyway, the first 10 episodes, possibly 11, I'm not sure about the two last ones yet, but the first 10 episodes will be series one, and that will cover the beginning. The very, very basics. Podkits, what did they do? What's the difference between a podkit and a bona fide starter kit like the Zelos kits from Aspire? E-Liquid, what's in them? What's in it? The very basics. The very basics. What I'm trying to do is put myself in the position that I was in seven years ago, but put that position into the context of the way the industry is sitting right now. That's what I'm trying to do here. So I'm trying to I'm trying to think the way that a brand new vapor is thinking, except not seven years ago, but think the way that a brand new vapor is thinking now. Because let's face it, folks, there is a lot more product out there now than there was seven years ago. And there is, with that vast array of choices comes even more questions. And the idea is, once the first series of eSig 101 is finished, that will open the door to the second series, which will run for around about five episodes, which covers, not this, that's a rebuildable, but it covers kits like this. <clears throat> the dual or single battery high wattage stock coil sub-ohm tank kits. The lung hitters. Not rebuildables, just the stock coil kits. What batteries to get? what battery types, what battery charger to get, basic battery safety. What's the difference between a single battery mod, a dual battery mod, temp control, should I give a fuck about it? Those, <laughs> sorry, but that's, that's, that might actually be the title of that video, coming to think about it, but the very basics to do with dual or single battery stock coil sub ohm tank setups. And then when we get to the end of that, that's when you open the door to the third and final series, the advanced stuff, mechs, basic mech safety, mech tubes, mech boxes, parallel mechs, series, do I have any series mechs? Yeah, I do. See, do I, have, do I have any series mechs? I think I do. I haven't given them all of them, I haven't given all of them away. 
Yeah, there is. There's still some Series Max in the studio. Rebuildable tanks. Rebuildable drippers. We've kind of covered coil types of rebuildables anyway, so I might repurpose that video for a refresh on that one. But, you know, so... Series 1. Beginner. Smoker. Giving up smoking. Moving on to vaping. Series 2. Intermediate. Smoker. Who's no longer a smoker who's now a pod user, thinking, hmm, i seen this bloke with a big huge box thing chucking out a big weather system. I want to do that. What do I get? What's the difference between the coil types? That kind of thing. What do these things actually do better than the pod kits that I was using before? That's the second series. Third series, the much more advanced stuff. Rebuildables, drippers, tanks. RDTAs, if RDTAs are still around by that point in time, which they probably will be. <coughs> mechanicals, parallel mechanicals, series mechanicals, battery safety, Ohm's law, the basics of Ohm's law. And that the idea is, more especially, more especially by the time February, March 2022 rolls around, by that point in time, I want at least Series 1 and Series 2 to be finished. And that way, Series 3 can be completed at the, at the, you know, kind of midway through 2022. And the reason I'm pushing, not so much pushing myself, but setting myself a date <clears throat> to have Series 1, the beginner series, finished, is there's a lot of rumours going around in the UK right now, right? There's a lot of rumours going around in the UK to do with the role that vaping is going to have in the UK government's the UK government's idea to get rid of smoking by 2027? Was it 2025 or 2027? That the the UK government's idea is to have a completely smoke free generation. So the generation that's growing up now, who will hit their teens by round about 2030, the UK government's idea is none of them will be smoking. None of them. So by the time 2023, I think it's 20, no, it's not 2023, I think it's 2030. It's either 2025 or 2030, I'm thinking it's 2030. By the time 2030 rolls around, which is nine years from now, when that generation hits 18 years old in 2030. The UK government's target is a simple is a simple one. 0% of them will be smokers. 0% of them will be smokers. And what the government wants to do is have future generations growing up in the UK who will be completely smoke-free. At the same time as that, the UK government is also pushing the current smoker base in the UK to give up smoking. And the rumours that have been going around is that the UK government, Stop Smoking Services and the National Health Service are going to start pushing electronic cigarettes, the starter kit style of electronic cigarettes. They're going to start pushing electronic cigarettes much more heavily as a way to give up smoking and quit the ciggies. What that entails is anyone's guess. The rumours I've been hearing, there's various rumours I've been hearing right now, actually, but the rumours... Uh, <clears throat> the rumours that I've been hearing is general practitioner, a doctor, says to someone who's showing the first signs of COPD or showing the first signs of severe lung damage or growing progressive lung damage from smoking, and they say to that smoker... We want you to give up smoking. The smoker says to the doctor, Well, doctor, I've tried Nicorette gum. I've tried other gums. I've tried patches. I've tried the sprays. None of them work. They all suck. And the doctor goes, Have you tried electronic cigarettes or vaping? The patient goes to the doctor, Well, I don't know about that, doctor. I've been seeing nothing but negative press. And let's face it, even the, neg the, the negative press bullshit is starting to happen here in the UK. It's only a handful of papers that are doing it, but they're still fucking doing it. And then the doctor turns around and says, Well, did you know, patient, that the Royal College of Physicians have actually said that vaping is 95% safer than smoking? Here's what I'm going to do to you, patient. I'm going to give you a voucher. There you go. 
that voucher is worth X amount of pounds for you to go into your local vape shop and redeem this voucher for a starter kit, a starter vaping kit to help you give up smoking. So the patient walks out the doctor's surgery with that voucher in his hand, walks into Vaporized or the local independent vape shop and redeems that voucher's full worth for a pod kit and two bottles of juice. That's one of the rumours that I've been hearing. There's also another rumour that I've been hearing and the the second rumour I've been hearing would be much easier for the NHS to actually work with instead of handing out vouchers which would be a fucking nightmare when it comes to paperwork instead of the instead of the NHS handing out vouchers the NHS start working directly with manufacturers so they contact the likes of smock well not so much smock they don't really do fucking starter kits <clears throat> they contact the likes of Vaporesso they contact the likes of Vaporesso, Geek Vape or Aspire, or maybe all three of them, and say to Geek Vape, Vaporesso and Aspire, Hi, we're the National Health Service of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. We would like to we would like to get your assistance. And your assistance means this. We want you, Geek Vape Aspire and uh, Geek Vape Aspire and Vaporesso, to make fifty thousand starter kits. First order, 50,000 starter kits, whether that be a pod kit or whether that be an actual starter kit with an internal lithium-ion battery, no external batteries, internal lithium-ion battery and a simple to use mouth to lung tank. But we want those kits that you make for us to be all the same. So in other words, it's not as if Vapress was going to give the National Health Service three different kits or three different styles of kits the kits that the nhs will order are all the same they're all standardized all of them they could be different colors but it's all going to be the same tank from vaporesso or aspire or uh, vaporesso or aspire uh, or other companies in other words vaporesso can only send one kit 50,000 of them, but one kit to the NHS. Aspire can only send one kit. 50,000 of them, but only one kit. And the same for other companies. That way there's some kind of standardisation going on within the NHS. The National Health Service give these companies a boatload of cash. And then the NHS internally distributes the starter kits internally within the NHS service itself. That way they don't need to deal with vouchers. They're actually giving the items out under the National Health Service free to the smoker. That's the second rumour that I've heard. And all of this is being planned at the end of this year. Well, not so much the end. When Parliament comes back from the summer recess this year. And supposedly, whether this part is to fucking highly doubt it's true, this next part, supposedly it's going to be implemented by the end of summer 2022. Now, I highly fucking doubt that. That is way too fast for the NHS. The NHS is free, but they're also very slow, extremely slow at implementing new ideas. But that's the rumours that I've been hearing, folks. And that's why I want the ESIG 101 Series 1 the beginner stuff, to be finished by the end of February 2022. That way, if this comes to pass and all of a sudden the NHS start pushing electronic cigarettes out, there is going to be literally millions, if this pans out, millions of smokers who are finding themselves with a vape device that they don't know about they don't have the first clue about, and they'll want more information about it. Planning ahead, folks, and if you're a reviewer in the UK, if you're a reviewer in the UK, I would suggest you might want to start doing your own electronic cigarette 101 series as well. Just just in case. You never know. You never know whether these rumours are going to come true or not, but I'm hedging a bet they will, because the government is very serious about their no smoking or stop smoking policies actually happening. 
They are very serious about it happening. Anyway. Oh. That. God, that tea's finished already. I need another one. Uh, that is basically the wrap-up for the beginning, folks. Um, what we're going to have a look at now is the first looks. Not that there's a lot of first looks. It's only one single item. But over to the first looks we go. Yes. Hello, all you wonderful people on Patreon, Surprise Star, YouTube, hashtag Floof Army, and of course, the folks that are going to be watching this in this coming Sunday's What's Up. First of the first looks of this week, and the folks over on Patreon, Surprise Star, and the YouTube members got to see this on Tuesday, which is literally the day this thing arrived. Still sealed in the box, as you can see, there's Mr. Mike Vapes. This is the brand new Eclipse from the folks over at Yacht, not Yacht, because that's what I used to be calling them, but apparently that's also a spelling for Yacht. I, I didn't even know that, but there we go, it's Y-A-U-G-H-T, that's how I've always spelt Yacht, but apparently that's a new spelling for it. Yacht Vape have decided to team up with Mr. Mike Vapes, and there's Mr. Mike Vapes there. This is the Eclipse RTA. Really, Vic, what the hell are you using that for? Hold on. <laughs> There we go, that's more like it. So let's pop this thing open and see what's going on in here. So, uh, that goes like, is it one of these? Should be a slidey one, why is this not opening up? Uh, that's, yeah, they've got this thing well wrapped with the outer sleeve. That is tight. Wow, that is really tight. There we go. So if we pop this box open and have a look at this tank, it's a small one. So let's zoom this in and have a look around. Starting at the very top here, what do we have? We should have an 810. Yeah, we do. 810, press fit, O-ring's actually in the cap. Bayonet top cap as well, big massive silicone plug at the top there to make sure everything's sealed, so you've got a bayonet top filling, I like the fill holes in this, that's just that the whole top's basically one massive fill hole, ah, I like the fill hole, very interesting, this is a very short tank though, very short tank, uh, the capacity's not going to be much for this, you're probably going to be looking around about what, uh, three, two, no, two mil? Yeah, this is bound to be 2 mil because this this was sent in. Actually, hold on. Where's the box? Come here, you. It looks like 2 mil. 2 mil, 3.5 mil with the bubble glass. Yeah, I was right. 2 mil. So, yeah, you're looking at a TPD compliant RTA here, folks. Well, TPD and TRPR. Airflow controllers down here, as you would expect. Fully adjustable. You've got an airflow hole there and an airflow hole on the opposite side. Let's crack this open and have a look at the most important part. Wow, that is a really shallow chamber. That is an extremely shallow chamber. Wow, this is an interesting design that Mike's came up with. Very shallow chamber. Half of it's the threads to get to actually get the bottom mounted on. That's a very shallow chamber. And there is the deck. So what we're looking at here is not a bottom, uh, not bottom airflow. We're looking at side airflow honeycomb. So air comes in here, goes up through the post, and then out through the honeycomb in the side. And your single coil is sitting across like that. But what's impressing me, I mean, these threads, right, these threads here go up through the threading here which means that your coil is going to be sitting directly underneath this. This is going to be one hell of a flavour banger. You're not going to be chucking clouds with this, but if you're all about the flavour, I haven't even tried the damn tank out yet, and I already know this is going to be an absolute flavour banger, this thing. Interesting design. Very interesting design that Mike Vapes has come up with. One of the downsides, though, of having a chamber this small and a chimney this small is the overall capacity of the tank at 2 mil. However, if we check the box, the bubble glass, I wonder if they've included it. They should include the bubble glass. Don't want to wreck the packaging too much. 
because I need to still take pictures of it. Oh, wrong side, Vic, you fucking idiot. There we go. Yeah, no, in fact, no, it's not. Where is it? Oh, yeah, there it is. They've actually included the bubble glass. So with the bubble glass, it's 3.5 mil. With the straight tank, it's 2 mil. So straight tank is... TPD and TRPR compliant, which means it can make it straight through and actually be sold, at least in the UK, without any issues in a brick and mortar store setting. And inside the packaging, you do, of course, have the bubble glass. Um, even with the bubble glass at 3.5 mil, yeah, you're going to be filling this tank a lot. You, you are definitely going to be... Oh, I like the coil that it comes with. Fuse Clapton. Triple core fused. That's a nice little coil. Yeah, the fuse wrapping's actually pretty good as well. Mind you, Yacht Vape have always been pretty good with the accessories. But there we go, folks. That was Mike Vape's brand new, well, Mike Vape's and Yacht Vape's uh, brand new Eclipse RTA. And I've got to, I've got to hand it to Mike. The, uh, the deck design on this is very, very interesting. And what I'm going to be doing is once I've finished it, once I've... Hit rec uh, once I've finished recording in this and the, the video's been uploaded for the folks on Patreon and all the screenshots, well not screenshots, all the pictures are out, I'm going to pop a fuse clapton in here, one of the proper coils fuse claptons, wick it up and see what this fella performs like, because this, this is going to be a flavour banger, I haven't even tried it yet, and just looking at the deck and chamber, you already know it's going to be a flavour banger, anyway, that's it for this section. I don't know if there's going to be any other stuff coming in uh, coming in this week. Uh, I doubt it. So there might just end up being only one um, only one first look this week. But we'll find out as the week progresses. Yes. There isn't really a lot of news to cover. There's only it's only really four news items that caught my eye. Hump day. That's the one we're looking for. Um, we need to head into window capture. This first one is a bit of good news from Europe for a change. So let's head into here. We are looking at this. Vap Italy 2021 is going ahead, which I am surprised about. Save the dates. Rome, 2nd and 3rd of October. Finally, some good news. This is from uh, the folks at Vape Around magazine, by the way. Finally, some good news for the world of vaping with the long-awaited Vap Italy 2021 event going ahead later this year. Vap Italy 2021 held at the Fiera... Am I saying that right? Fiera Roma Exhibition Centre in Rome will open its doors between Saturday, October the 2nd and Sunday, October the 3rd, bringing together both the e-cig sector and the general public. Particular attention will be paid to the safety of all participants with nothing left to chance. The event will comply with national and regional COVID regulations as well as the exhibition's fairground safety protocols to allow the varied world of vaping to physically come together. Um, I get asked, and I, I, I honestly don't know, folks, but as I get asked this a lot, Vic, is, is the October Expo in the UK going ahead? Personally, I don't know, but if you look at if you look at Vapor Expo UK's website, they haven't updated it since October of 2020. If you look at Vapor Expo's Facebook page, they're very quiet. The way I'm looking at it is this: we're already in August. We're now at the very beginning of August. We've only got two months to go, and we're in October. If there was going to be an October Expo they would have announced it by now. I honestly don't think there is going to be an October UK Vapor Expo because if there was going to be one going ahead, they would have announced it already. They would have announced it already. The longer they wait, the less chance they've got of booking a spot inside the NEC. And if you look at the NEC's website, they're starting to fill up for October now. They are really starting to fill up for October, so I honestly don't think there's going to be an expo this year. So that's now two years in a row there's been no expo in the United Kingdom. So I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, but if you are an Italian vapor, good news, you've got an expo to go to. You, you have an expo to go to on October the 2nd and October the 3rd. And if I had the money, I would be going over there as well because it's not too hot in Rome. 
at the beginning of October. The temperatures are very tolerable in Rome. If they were going to be, if they were going to be holding this in July or August, yeah, you'd walk off the plane into an oven because it gets rather toasty in Italy during summer. But October, the temperatures are starting to go down. That's probably why they're holding in October. But yeah, if you are an Italian vapor or you're on mainland Europe and a drive to Italy is no problem for you, you've got an expo to go to. And uh, I, I wish the organisers and everyone who's going to VAP Italy best wishes and best of luck because there's, there's, there's a lot of people out there like myself that are missing the expos, really missing the expos. And uh, it's good to see at least one expo coming back this year. It's good to see at least one coming back. Moving on to the depressing stuff now. <laughs> this asshole, fucking Michael Bloomberg. What is almost, there has been a lot of people talking about this, by the way. What is almost, and what is, oh, this is from uh, Vaping360, by the way. What is almost certainly a preview of policies that will be urged at the fall meeting of the World Health Organization's Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, FCTC. The World Health Organization, better known as the World Shell Organization, has issued a report on new and emerging tobacco and nicotine product use that encourages countries to adopt harsh anti-vaping and anti-harm reduction positions. There is literally nothing new in the report. It's the usual set of complaints and lies about vaping and a re-upping of the evergreen list of excuses from the WHO's own feeble anti-smoking progress. Worldwide tobacco control efforts would be going swimmingly, the WHO says, except for those darn tobacco and related companies' attempts to reverse the progress by encouraging uptake of non-combustible nicotine products like vapes which, as usual, are called ENDS. Vaping products contain nicotine, they explain, which may affect adolescent brain development. I'm, I'm going to end this right here. It's, it's always, THINK OF THE CHILDREN! That last bit they read there, right? Vaping products contain nicotine, which may affect adolescent brain development. Let's get up close and personal. Uh, hello, hello, world, world shell, world shell organization. Hi, hi, hi. How are you doing? Right, you're saying this about nicotine. What about caffeine? What about the epidemic that's currently going on of kids guzzling liters and liters of caffeine infused energy drinks that are also loaded with a shitload of sugar? What about the opioid epidemic that's currently gripping the United States? What about all of these problems that are affecting kids world shell organizing? Oh, wait a minute, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Sugar lobbying is actually a thing, people, for the people that didn't know this. In the United States, and to a certain extent, lobbyists in the World Health Organization, there is lobbyists that support sugar. The sugar industry. The sugar industry lobbying or lobbyists spend almost as much money as the pharma lobbyists spend every year. This is why the World Health Organization do not touch sugar-laden energy drinks, even though there is an epidemic of kids essentially starting to become hooked on the likes of Red Bull. World Health Organization don't see a thing about it. Why is that? Because the sugar industry spends billions every year on lobbying. That's why. But no, it's all about the vaping. Nicotine's bad! Think of the children! Even though the same kids that we're trying to think about are hooked in nicotine, not, not hooked in nicotine, hooked in caffeine, hooked in sugar, and there is now an obesity problem with a lot of kids over in the United States, and it's now starting to happen here in the UK. Also, all these kids they're thinking about as well. What about the opioid crisis that's currently going on in the United States? There are kids slowly being hooked on all sorts of crazy drugs. FDA-approved drugs, however, which is why the World Health Organization is not talking about that either. This is why anything the WHO 
says. Don't believe it. Simple as that. It's not a case of take it with a grain of salt. Don't believe it. Because this is the same World Health Organization that turned round at the beginning of the COVID crisis. Beginning of the COVID crisis. And said, don't do this. Don't do that. China's done a marvellous job at calming everything down. And then the truth started to come out. The truth started to come out about what the World Health Organization was saying about the start of the COVID crisis. It's time after time after time when the World Health Organization says something, 50% of the time they do a 180 within three months and the other 50% of the time they're wrong. Except unlike the first 50% of the time, when they do the 180, that last 50%, because of lobbying interests and all the money they're getting from governments, they continue with the narrative on and on and on. Vaping's bad. Don't do vaping. Keep smoking. Fuck it. Don't do vaping. Vaping's bad. But the reason they're all saying that is because all the money that the World Health Organization gets, the vast bulk of the cash they're getting in is from governments. And one of the biggest donators is the US government. This is one of the reasons that Donald Trump, when he was the president, wanted to pull funding from the World Health Organization because the United States is spending a fortune on the WHO. This is also why there is growing, there's a growing number of UK politicians across party benches. We're talking about Conservative, Labour, and SNP, and SNP politicians who are all saying to Boris, Boris, pull funding from the World Health Organization. And all of them are citing the WHO's anti-vaping stance. Because the way that these politicians here in the UK are seeing it is this. Hold on a minute. The UK government is neutral, slightly leaning positive towards vaping. We've got the Royal College of Physicians, the Royal College of Nurses, the Royal College of Midwives, the Royal College of General Practitioners, in fact, the entire Royal College Assembly, who combined are older than the country of the United States of America. So the Royal College is sitting there saying, well, vaping is 95% safer than smoking. And now you've got the World Health Organization saying, oh, vaping's just as bad as smoking. Don't do it. Think of the children. All these fucking Karens running about with little fucking Timmy that keep buying podcasts on fucking Karen's credit card that, that fucking Karen shouldn't be giving little Timmy in the fucking first place. It's because the World Health Organization are far too busy listening to social media and far too busy listening to lobbying interests and the money coming in from certain governments. They have taken this anti-vaping stance. Yeah, that's the reason they're doing it. It's not nothing fuck all to do with the health of the world. It's got a lot to do with the paid interests of the World Health Organization as a business. And don't kid ourselves here, folks. The World Health Organization is not some kind of charitable existence organized. They're a business. They are a business. It's like the American Cancer Society. Oh, it's a society. It's a ch No, it's a business. The American Cancer Society have got billions locked up in property. What other charity do you know that's got billions locked up in property? This is another reason the American Cancer Society are kind of anti-vaping. They're not full-on anti-vaping, but they're kind of anti-vaping because the way the American Cancer Society see it is this. If smoking rates plummet in the United States, the amount of cancer or the amount of new cancer patients plummets with the rate of smoking going down. The less smokers on the planet, the less need for the ACS. The less need for the ACS, the less donations go to the ACS. The less donations go to the ACS, the more at risk the American Cancer Society's property portfolio is to, let's say, 
market swings. This is why I've never been a supporter of the ACS. That's why I've never been a supporter of the World Health Organization. This is why when it comes to actually supporting an independent body, the first independent body I generally tend to turn to is the Royal College of Physicians. Number one, they're not bought and paid for by the UK government. Number two, they've been on the go since the 1400s. Now, you would think if the Royal College of Physicians had a track record of getting things wrong, they wouldn't have lasted more than half a millennia. This is the same Royal College of Physicians, by the way, that three years ago the World Health Organization dismissed as... What was the World Health Organization's words again? Something along the lines of not having enough scientific evidence? What? No matter where you go, uh, and every, and literally every single vaping news site is covered in this latest article by the World Health Organization. Um, and the worrying part of all this is there are countries out there that take the WHO's word as gospel when it comes to health. Literally, they take everything the WHO says and they take it as the gospel truth. That's the worrying part here, folks. There is countries like the UK, the UK government and the NHS and the Royal College that takes WHO's recommendations under advisement. Those two words usually mean, fuck off, we're not listening to you. But there's other countries out there that do take the WHO's word as gospel. And that's the worrying part. Because there's already countries out there that are pushing for flavour bans. There's already countries out there that are pushing for flat-out bans of electronic cigarettes being sold in their country. What the WHO is doing is doing nothing but giving the anti-vaping establishment, number one, more ammunition, and number two, more reasons for the anti-vaping establishment to set up even more anti-vaping establishment lobbies in several countries that already want to get rid of vaping. The WHO don't care about anyone but their own bank accounts. That's all they care about. And if you ask me, the World Health Organization should be shut down as an organization because they haven't actually done anything to save or improve world health. They haven't. If you think about the track record of disasters actual disasters that have happened under the WHO's tenure. Why are they still around as an organisation when every single thing they have touched has turned to shit or failed miserably? It's one big fucking money basket. That's all the WHO is. Anyway, enough about those idiots. <sighs> what are we going to move on to next? We're going to move on to... Campaigners call for outdoor smoking ban in Wales following an announcement that Oxfordshire is set to become the first UK county to ban outdoor smoking. Campaigners are calling for a similar ban throughout Wales. Concerning data revealed on World No Tobacco Day this year, there we go, I was, I was wondering when that hiccup was going to arrive, has indicated that smoking is the biggest cause of early preventable deaths in adults aged over 35 in Wales. Ash Wales, Action on Smoking and Health, chose the occasion to remind people of the health problems that result from the dangerous addiction. Moreover, besides the heartache and personal losses that smoke-related diseases and deaths cause, they are also costing the NHS in Wales over £300 million a year. In 2017, the Welsh Government set a target to reduce the number of smokers in Wales to 16% of all adults by 2020. To date, this target has not been met. Maybe that's got something maybe that's got something to do with your your main lead dude being anti vaping. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah, it's true though. The lead health guy, the lead health minister of Wales is so anti vaping. It is fucking shocking. It's no surprise that action and smoking and health in Wales cannot hit their targets because they're ignoring this. Well, not this. But 
well not you know starter kits that's what they're ignoring they're ignoring vaping because the lead guy there for year on year on year was so anti-vaping compared to the rest of the uk it made wales stand out like a sore thumb it really did <clears throat> To this effect, local lawmakers are being urged to extend the current smoking restrictions to outdoor hospitality areas so that smoking would be banned in places such as outdoor areas and restaurants and pubs. Here's the thing though, right, and I'm, I'm going to fucking say this now. When the smoking ban came into effect for indoor places like pubs, clubs, restaurants, right, you could no longer smoke inside a train or a plane or a pub or a restaurant everyone said that's it smoking rates will go down the entire country will give up smoking did it happen no it didn't they are now wanting to introduce smoking bans in beer gardens essentially outdoor areas that are connected to an indoor public area like a cafe garden a restaurant garden a beer garden Will banning smoking there do anything? No, because I'll tell you what the smoker will do. Instead of going out the back to have a smoke, they'll go out the front to have a smoke instead. In other words, on the public footpath on the high street. So instead of, instead of seeing all the smokers out the back at your local pub puffing away, they'll be at the front puffing away instead. What are you going to do next? ban outdoor smoking entirely, you do that, you'll have riots on your hands. That's what you'll have. So there's only there's only so far that these public space bans can go before you start to infringe on the rights of the actual smoker. If you turn around to a smoker and say, you're walking down the high street on a public footpath, we're banning you from smoking. What's that smoker going to do? They're going to turn around and tell that councillor to fuck off. That's exactly what that smoker's going to do. And it's not just that. <clears throat> if they're going down this road of banning smoking on public places, what's next? This? Hmm? We're talking about Wales here, which for all intents and purposes is the only part of the UK that's basically anti-vaping. When it comes to the government side of things, it's the only part of the UK that's anti-vaping. Is... The Welsh government using this as a tester. So if this passes, they can ban this in outdoor public places as well. So if you're a vapor, you can't vape at a concert. If you're a vapor, you can't vape in a beer garden. If you're a vapor, you can't vape in a outdoor public garden restaurant. Are they using the smoking route as a test to ban this next? When I first read that, that's what popped into my head. Are they going down this road to see how easy it would be to pass it? And if it turns out to be very easy to pass, they can then do it to this. Wales. What the fuck is it with Wales? Lovely, lovely people. And I know loads of people in Wales and they're all phenomenal people. But why is the Welsh government a load of fucking idiots? They really are. They are so fucking clueless when it comes to vaping and when it comes to public health policy. They push all these wild ass schemes that never fucking work and then they go, uh, what, I don't, our, our smoking rates have not decreased in line with the rest of the UK. Hello? 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 Oh no, we're ignoring that. No, we're ignoring that. If you want to give up smoking, you must use the you must use the regulated patches, nicotine sprays, or chewing gum in order to give up smoking. We don't endorse vaping at all. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Tell that to Public Health England, who have seen their smoking rates decline in line with the numbers they were targeting for 2022. Okay, they're a little bit behind because of COVID-19, but they still say they're going to hit their numbers by the end of 2022. Wales are nowhere near their numbers because they're ignoring this. Yeah, it's, it's fucking insane. It really is, it's insane. And I think, folks, does that cover the news? Yeah, 
that basically covers the news for this week. Not much news, a lot of it, a lot of it, was to do with what the World Health Organization was saying. Um, the, the World Health Organization is just a bit... They're a bunch of fucking lunatics. They're lunatics in the asylum. That's what the WHO are. And if it was a case of governments not listening to the WHO... I, I would have just ignored all the WHO stories, but the fact of the matter is, there is countries out there that do take what the WHO says as gospel. And it wouldn't surprise me if you start to see more and more countries, especially countries around Asia, deciding to crack down on vaping because of what the WHO have said. It wouldn't surprise me if that started to happen. Uh, but all we can do is basically wait and see. Anyway, that is it from me, folks. As always, thanks for watching and have a good one.